The girl is sleeping in a car in the middle of nowhere. The thug is drooling over the girl's beautiful body. The girl wakes up to find the man in front of her. She honks the horn in fear and tries to call her parents to save her. But the more the girl struggles, the more the pervert gets excited. A bearded man from a short distance away hears the noise and immediately goes to him. The girl looked at the other man and thought she was saved, but she didn't realize they were actually in cahoots. The bearded man threatened the girl with a gun. A couple heard the commotion. He handed the child over to his wife and went to the scene as fast as he could. The girl called out for her father, but he was knocked out. The girl's mother also arrived. Eventually, the family was tied up. Two perverts took them to the woods. They assaulted her daughter and wife in front of the men. The girl died in the process. The girl's parents were tied to a tree. They put kids on their heads. They practiced shooting with them. The man was trembling with fear. The kids kept falling from his head. Bob lost his patience and shot him in the head. As she watched her daughter and her husband being killed, Anna was overcome with grief and helplessness. The kins were placed on top of her head, and she turned her head to shake them off. Bob was so angry with her for not cooperating that he slapped her unconscious. Then she put the can on top of her head. But these two thugs are terrible shots. The first shot from the bearded man missed the can. Bob misses the second shot. The bearded man took another shot and still missed. Bob laughed at him and he felt humiliated. So he shot her in the chest. But that's not all. They went through the girl's cell phone and found out she had a younger brother. In order to prevent him from coming to take revenge on them 18 years later, they decided to kill the family. When they arrived at the family's tent, they found it empty. It turns out that the kid had run away by himself long ago. He was crying for his mom, but it was found by two traveling couples. The boyfriend, Ted, is a doctor. The baby was starting. He didn't bring any formula, so he wanted to take him to the hospital. But the car broke down and wouldn't start. While they were at their wit's end, a car approached, and there was Bob, the robber from earlier. They rushed forward to ask for help. Bob saw what was going on. He started lying about meeting his parents. So he took Jack and went into the woods to look for them. Jenny stayed behind to take care of him. But Jack was taken to the place where they had dumped the bodies. His jaw dropped at the sight of three naked bodies. He rushed forward to check them out and found that they were not breathing. He's so focused on saving them. He doesn't realize the look on Bob's face. Now his life is in danger. Suddenly he realizes that Anna seems to be breathing. He quickly went up to her, ripped the tape off and tried to find out what was going on, but behind him, Bob was already aiming his gun. By the time, Anna realizes it's too late. Jenny, who heard the gunshot, realized something was wrong. She wanted to ask the bearded man what was going on, but the bearded man pulled out a shotgun. Jenny rushed into the car and locked the door, but she was hit by a shotgun but from the bearded man, which broke the glass. Jenny took out a dagger and cut the bearded man. Whilst he was bleeding, she took the baby and ran into the woods. On the other side, Jack has a gun pointed at his head. Bob tries to shoot but realizes he's loaded. Jack pushes him down and runs deeper into the jungle. Bob tries to shoot but doesn't load his gun. The two of them are in a chase through the jungle. Bob hears something and thinks it's Jack he's chasing. He goes up and takes a shot. He didn't realize he'd accidentally killed his teammate. After Bob left, Jack fled here. Looking at the shotgun on the ground, he decided to fight back. Meanwhile, the baby Jenny was holding suddenly cried out. Hearing the sound, Bob came here to target Jenny. Jenny could only follow his orders. Bob was so annoyed by his cries that he grabbed him. He was thrown to the ground. Jenny didn't know if anything had happened to him. Then he tied her up to try to attract Jack. But Jack just stayed away. Even when Bob assaulted his girlfriend, he didn't do anything. After a while, he went back to the car. After some intense thought, he drove off in his car. Bob, who was assaulting Jenny, heard the car and chased after him with Jenny. If he got away, the whole thing would be exposed. On the way, he realized that he was gone. Jenny thought he must have been rescued by her boyfriend. Bob and Jenny drove after him. He was laughing at Jenny's loser boyfriend. He ran away without her. Jenny grabbed the steering wheel when he wasn't looking. Then she lost control of the car and crashed into a tree. Jack took him to the hospital and immediately came to the police station. He led the police back to the woods and found the car that crashed into the tree. But only Jenny was in the car. Jenny saw the police and wanted to say something. Suddenly, a gunshot from the distance hit the cop. Another cop was shot before he could react. Bob came out of the woods with a gun. Jack tries to get out of the car, but gets shot in the shoulder. Jenny tries to escape. Bob threatened her boyfriend's life. Jenny had to come back. With both men wounded, Jenny was given the job of driving the car. Bob thought he'd wait until he got off the mountain to kill them. They guessed what Bob was thinking, seeing that Bob hadn't fastened his seatbelt. Jenny thought that she would die anyway. She simply pushed the gas pedal and jerked the steering wheel. The car spun 360 degrees out of control. Bob, who was seriously injured, tried to escape, but Jenny pinched him with the car door. Eventually, they were rescued. But after this incident, Jenny had to rethink her future with her boyfriend. The girl has a strong fear of water. She was kept alive by fluids every day. That's why she hasn't drunk a drop of water in 18 years. It's said that she suffered from a strange disease since she was a child. Not only did she dream of water monsters at night, and when she saw water on the ground, 
she would cover it up with a towel. Over the years, she didn't even dare to drink a drop of water. On this day, in order to help her overcome her psychological problems, they were ready to do an exorcism for her at the drop of a hat. Madison was terrified of the bathtub in front of her, but in order to live up to her girlfriend's good intentions, she had the courage to lie down without saying a word. They dragged Madison's body into the bathtub until the water in the bathtub slowly covered her head. Suddenly, a small black hand grabbed her. The sisters peed in their pants when they saw it. Madison was about to drown when the clever curly hair girl found something to smash the tub and hit it. Madison was saved, realizing that Madison may have been haunted by a water ghost. A terrified Linda starts to panic. When her partner saw how scared she was, she scolded her for not making a fuss. The frightened Linda had just returned home. She suddenly heard a strange noise coming from the washing machine. When she was curious, she went to check it out. Her diamond necklace fell in. Suspicious, she reached into the washer to retrieve it, but a black hand grabbed her arm. Then the machine began to shake wildly. Apparently, they're all being watched by the dreaded water ghost. This girl had just finished her workout and started drinking. She choked on it because she drank too slowly. So she spit the water out of her stomach onto her new cell phone. Just as she was about to wipe her phone with a towel, her cell phone suddenly and mysteriously disappeared. Before the dumbfounded girl knew what was going on, her headphones were pulling her over like a demon. Terrified, she took off her headphones and tried to run away. But she was gripped by a small black hand on her scalp. It took her down in one fell swoop. The girl tried to break free, but she was no match for the water ghost. The next moment she was in a big bathtub. Panicked, she climbed out of the bathtub and tried to escape. But then there was a sound of footsteps behind her. She was so scared that she fell into a water tank. As the water in the tank kept filling up, although she managed to hold on for three seconds, she was finally drowned alive in the tank, and then the ghosts moved on to their next target. Linda was discussing the ghosts with Kobia. Suddenly, a pair of white, black hands grabbed her. They grabbed her around the waist and pulled. She was so scared, she rushed to Kobia for help, but Kobia was already stunned. Soon Linda disappeared into the pool, and the dark water gradually returned to its original state. The next moment, she was out of the dreaded bathtub. As she wondered where she was, suddenly, a pair of smooth, delicate pig's hooves came into view. Linda begged her to leave her alone, but in the end, the water ghost sent her into the sea. This horrible elevator is not just any elevator. It's said that anyone who comes here will be targeted by a cloaked water ghost. As soon as the three unknowing sisters stepped into the elevator, water began to seep out of their heads. The girls were so frightened that they climbed up the handrail. As the water flowed, it soon filled the bottom of the elevator. Then an extremely cute-looking water ghost came up. With his handsome face, the girls were terrified. At that moment, the handrail suddenly broke. The girl lost her center of gravity and fell straight down. Although her companions pulled her back in time, but the ghost dragged her into the water. Luckily, one of them opened the elevator door. The terrified girls escaped with their lives. And then little Kobia was in the tub. Before she knew what was going on, she was suddenly chained up by a water ghost behind her. Then she was dragging the chain to the tank. It pulled her by the hair and killed her. There were five girls, but now they're the only ones left to get to the bottom of it. They had the nerve to go to the other side's lair. While Madison was still searching for the water ghost, when her companion above her was suddenly pulled away by the monster, Madison had no choice but to keep going. When she found her best friend, she was locked up in a water tank. Madison tried her best to save her. Madison tried her best to get her out, but she drank too much water and died. At that moment, the water ghost showed up. Madison lit a torch. She stabbed at it without saying a word. While the other party was screaming in pain, she stabbed the torch directly into its mouth. At the end of the story, Madison was the only one who survived. She also overcame her fear of water. The Drownsman is a nightmarish horror ride that leads the audience into an endless dark abyss. The director uses classic horror elements in this movie, such as eerie sound effects, realistic nightmare scenes and tense camera switches, successfully creating a tense and disturbing atmosphere. The whole story is full of unpredictable twists and turns, thus arousing the audience's curiosity and tension. After almost drowning in a lake, Madison finds herself bound to a life of fear, unable to describe what happened to her. During the moments she was underwater, she begins to develop hydrophobia, an abnormal fear of water. Crippled by her post-trauma, Madison attempts to shut out the world, but her fear intensifies, and she's faced with the vision of a dark figure that haunts her day and night. Day and night, after watching her struggle for one year with the phobia and visions, Madison's four friends attempt an unconventional intervention, in which they after watching her struggle for one year with the phobia and visions, Madison's four friends attempt an unconventional intervention in which they accidentally open a floodgate to a dark place where none of them are safe. As Madison and her friends dive deeper into the dark history of this figure that haunts them, it reaches out and begins dragging them to a horrifying place that they can never come back from. That they can never come back from. Every corner of the movie could be hiding a terrible secret, 
making the viewing process ready to face sudden scares. The plot of the movie is cleverly designed to place the characters in a horrifying place that makes you nervous for the safety of the main characters. The performances of the actors are also a highlight of the movie. They managed to convey the characters' sense of fear and helplessness in the face of a supernatural threat. Such emotional resonance strengthens the strong connection between the audience and the movie, making the entire horror experience more realistic and profound. Overall, The Drownsman is an extremely creative and tense horror choice. Viewers are in for a fear-filled time, with unpredictable plot developments and realistic performances that are sure to impress. If you seek a thrilling horror ride, this movie is not to be missed.